Welcome to another Know Your House episode. And in this one, I want to talk about something that's very close to my heart, being a plumber, and that's the Flushing WC and why it has turned into a bit of a disaster. It was a brilliant idea. It wasn't invented by Thomas Crapper, as many people think. He was a good plumber. He tweaked it a little bit, came up with a few modifications, but it was actually invented by somebody called John Harrington, who invented it and presented one to Queen Elizabeth I. So that just shows you how old it is. And uh, that was very nice of him to do that. I suppose it saved him getting his head chopped off. But anyway, she was the first person really to indulge to sit on a throne which was a throne and uh, be able to flush it away rather than having somebody wiping her backside which is what they used to do to monarchs beforehand so i'm told anyway i digress let's move on well let's look at the what we call the water waste preventer now the water waste preventer is really the posh name that we learned in college for the flushing wc or the loose system or whatever you want to call it now, this is something that may be familiar to any of you who are about my age, but a lot of you younger ones have probably never seen anything like this. They called it the Thunderbox. And what you had here was an arm and a very strange thing called a, a chain. And you used to do whatever you were going to do. And then when you finished, you'd pull that chain, give it a good old yank. And the inside here, they had a bell. It was just a cast iron bell. And in here was a pipe. So the level was controlled by the ball valve, the water coming in. The level was set so that that water would sit just below that open pipe, which was up there. And when you flushed it with this chain here, what you would find is that the bell would lift up on this arm and with it, it would draw up some water because there's a vacuum there basically. And that water would cascade into there, down the pipe, and into the loo and obviously you let go of the chain and, and the bell went back down but because there was a gap at the bottom here the water that was in there would continue to go down into the loo up to the point where it reached the bottom there and you would get a little suck of air and that would break the siphon you would hear that lovely when it had finished so you got clang first of all was the old cast iron belt went up and then when it finished doing its flush. Now that was great because it had two gallons of water in it and it meant that you couldn't get any more than two gallons going into the loo. So rather than just turning on a tap and just judging for yourself how much water you need, this had automatically set the volume of water and it really was the beginning of something very, very good. Over here, you had a overflow pipe. And if the water rose above there, it would come out the overflow pipe. And you had to put that overflow pipe, according to the water bylaws, which we used to follow the water regulations, you had to put that overflow pipe in a position which would cause a nuisance. So people couldn't ignore it. So you didn't put it coming out on the top of a roof. You put it coming out over somebody's doorway so that when they came out, they went, oh dear, the loo's overflowing again. Better call the plumber. So that was a great idea. But like all great ideas, they needed to mess around with it. Yeah, you can't just leave a good idea. They did away with all that. The original Burlingtons were taken out, lovely old cast iron cisterns, taken away and used as flower pots. You used to see hundreds of them. Because they had a lovely cast iron insignia on them, they get used, hung on the wall and they'd grow flowers out of them. The next thing we had was a, another kind of siphon which was something like Dudley Turbo or any of those, but it was plastic basically. And in here we had a plunger and that plunger, again, still with the chain on it. And the plunger would lift a bit of water up and that water would cascade down there and do the same job as that big cast iron siphon, just a little bit lighter, a little bit cheaper. And in the bottom of that plunger, that plunger was often round and just had some big holes in it like that and on the bottom of that plunger was a piece of polythene that just was exactly the same size or a piece of rubber back in the day it was exactly the same size as the plunger itself if you looked at it from the side you would see a plunger disc like that with holes in it like that and the water would be lifted up because 
the polythene would be sat down so the water would be lifted up there it would go over the top into here and begin the siphon action now that polythene would then lift up at both sides what some people would call a flat valve or diaphragm or whatever but it would mean that all the rest of the water could carry on with the siphon up until that point where again it sucked in air so a variation on a theme a great idea and um, that was not too bad apart from the fact that that polythene on there would wear out and you'd have to get a plumber in to change it over but that was a regular job for me to go and do those and then of course they decided they didn't want these great thunder boxes with these very efficient flushes which cascaded down and really did a, a great job fashion dictated that people wanted a low level one so the flush pipe wasn't as long but you still had the same arrangement here and then we did away with the chain and we put a little lever on there a little handle and then that Porsche the plunger up lifted the plunger up same idea same thing happened not bad but of course it's lower so you're not going to get such a good flush as you used to in the past and people say oh it doesn't seem to flush like it used to so well it wouldn't it used to be up there and now it's down here so think about it. it's gravity isaac newton and all that so the next thing they did because they weren't content with that got to get rid of that nasty flush pipe the next thing they did was what we call the close coupled system here still the same idea still doing exactly the same thing as the last one but of course it's even lower so the flush is even less so it increased the volume to make it work better but it didn't have the same power it wasn't as good but it's progress that's what people wanted they wanted it all nice and tickety boo nice and low and sleek and well oh, i don't know anyway they hadn't finished yet don't forget we're still talking about water waste prevention the prevention of wasting water if you like the next thing they decided to do for reasons unknown well actually i'll tell you why they did it because they thought they could save even more water and what they did is they did away with the siphon and they just had a hole in the bottom of the system with a kind of a disc and a plunger thing on on the top of it a bung if you like all that was basically doing and again because they didn't want to have a lever now so they're going to have a button on the front here and the idea was that you press the button it lifted the plunger up and it allowed water to come down into the system and flush it away now the idea of this which had hitherto been illegal it was used in the continent it was used in america but the british said no we don't want that because that's not a very good design we want our old siphon but in the end this won the day probably because of the eu and because they had to standardize the design but whatever it was there it was we had this affair here now what it allowed them to do was to choose whether you had a full flush of six liters or whether you had a reduced flush of say four and a half or three i can't remember exactly but it reduced the flush and the idea was that on the button here you had a little button there and a big button there i don't know how many people know this really because when you go in the loo you know you don't want to read a manual on how to use it you just want to go in there flush it away and then walk out and you go oh dear it didn't flush away the contents better flush it again oh dear still hasn't oh what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to flush the big button when you have a poo and the small button when you have a piss but nobody put that on the buttons they just thought you would deduce it by your own sort of savvy oh yeah done a big one or done a small one so what we then had is we had flush panels very nice looking affairs so we would have a small one here and a big one here and again what they should have done is put piss there poo there and that would have been something people could have understood and they would have gone oh yeah i know which one i've got to press now but of course they didn't do that so people are still pressing the wrong one still pressing it twice and using more water than they ever used before but it was even worse than that because these little valves if you like down here so we've got a we've got a, a hole here and we've got a bung that goes in there say it doesn't look quite like that because a lot of the time it's a flat disc but that would be an ideal type of idea so that the water 
when that bung was in, couldn't come down into the pan. Debris collected on those, all kinds of bits of gunge and so on, and suddenly you've got a trickle of water going down into the pan. We've done away with the overflow pipe by then, and we're just relying on it to go down into the pan. And they're relying on the diligence of the householder to say, oh dear, look, my loo is overflowing, it's running into the pan, I better call a plumber. But do they bother? Well, you know what it's like, you know, you intend to call a plumber, you don't call a plumber, you're a little bit scared about the money, and you just leave that thing trickling away. Now, if you're on a water meter, you've got to pay for what you use, that becomes a problem because you get your water bill into it, what the hell is this? And you realize that every day that thing's been trickling away, it's been costing you money. So at that point you do think, ah, I'm gonna call the water company up and I'm gonna tell them they've got the bill wrong, come and check the meter. Guy would come around and say, well, it's your loo, you fool, it's just trickling away. That's where it's coming from, so get it fixed. But of course, loads and loads of people aren't on a meter and those things are just pouring away into the loo day after day after day. Rather than have this water waste preventer, which is where we started out in this whole saga, we now end up with a design which is allowing the wastage of water. They've shot themselves in the foot, trying to be too clever, trying to get this dual flush idea going so they could save water. As I say, they didn't save any because people end up flushing it twice or using the big one on every single occasion. And then added to that, we've got this problem of this valve letting by and letting water into the pan. So that's progress. Where do we go from here, you might ask. God only knows because if they're going to outlaw this, they can now do that, obviously, because we're not in the EU. You can do what you like, but it means that all those pans which have been fitted, all those systems that have been designed, have now got to be redesigned. And do you know what? That's not going to happen. What's going to happen is they're going to force everybody onto a meter, and then they're going to rub their hands, and they're going to say, well, if you're wasting water, at least you're paying for it, and our shareholders love that. So, I'm Roger Bisbee. I hope you found that illuminating. If you didn't, let me know. And if you did, if you want more of these, then how about you do the same as Mr. Spencer and you send us an idea of something you want covered in the future. I'll be happy to oblige. Did I tell you my story about me at the Isle of Wight Festival in 1970, building the loos? If you were one of the people that was at that festival and you used those loos, which were basically just made out of Dexian and spread out over trenches, most horrendous thing, hardball panels in between each cubicle, you got me to blame for it because I was on the little committee, if you like, that designed that and I also installed them. And when we put them in, People said, would you use those? And I went, oh yeah, yeah, of course I'd use those. That was a bit of a hippie in those days. I thought, oh, it's all right. But actually, once a few thousand people have been in there and done it, I looked at them and I thought, I'm not going to use those. I had an all areas pass, so I used the ones backstage. Same ones that Jimi Hendrix used and the Who and the Doors and all those other wonderful people. So there's my claim to fame, if you like. I'm Roger Bisbee. Come back and see us soon. Another one of my boring stories coming up.